Hello everyone, this is uh, Unstoppable Stiletsy again. This isn't a live stream, just so you know, but um, I guess some in the Definitive Edition community wanted to see if the new Napoleonic era revolt was any good, and if so, how to obtain it quickly, and when it would be most effective. Now I'm going to try to do a couple of games here, hopefully couple of free lobby games and see if we can yes. get some good wins in with them and sort of try to hash out when and how are we supposed to utilize the Napoleonic Air Revolt. For those that haven't used it yet, it's one of the more complex revolts in the game because unlike other revolutions, you actually have to revolt twice to acquire it. Initially, you revolt as um, the French Republic, essentially, as your first revolt, with the Great Terror, just like it happened in history, and then, once you reach that French Republic stage, then you become the Empire of France under Napoleon, through a card available through that revolution. So, it's actually more expensive, indeed, than a regular revolution. You have to pay the usual 1k food, wood, and coin to get the French Republic. But, the card to go to the Napoleonic era ends up costing a bigger sum of food and coin, but no wood. So, a lot of decisions need to be made of when and where it's appropriate to acquire it, and how long we should stay in the middle phase, that being the French Republic, to attain it. Now, I did my deck in a very specific way that I guess we could check out. I guess we could do it right now, since it seems like this uh, lobby's taken a while. So, this deck here is the one that I prophesize. Basically, your Sanctuates, which are going to be your revolutionary villager that you get with both of those revolutions, does not have a villager tag. As such, having gathering rate cards is kind of a waste, and you know that I usually like to get refrigeration and royal mint, at least, but in this case it's kind of a pointless venture. So what I do is, is I put crossbowmen, hussars in the top, I put more unit shipments down here, as well as unit upgrades. Now two that I handpicked in particular was royal fencing school, and the heavy fortifications. These are going to be pretty good options to get if you can ship them in before you revolt because this will allow your mainly infantry based army to come out quicker and uh, the heavy fortifications will allow us to do tower rushing a bit later when we start revolting because essentially once we get some of our cards in there, our grenadiers will actually be able to build outposts as well as other military buildings. So it might actually behoove us to get all those nice tower upgrades for free in a way that doesn't hinder up our revolt times. We're going to see how effective this deck is. I did it a little bit before with the AI just to see, alright, here's some pointers of how we want to do it. But in general, you gotta keep in mind that this is a revolution, so the same rules sort of apply here. Get as many trading posts as you can possibly get, hopefully before the revolution, but because your Sanctuary Revolt Revolution are villagers are villagers, they can still acquire some resources through gathering. It's just at a reduced rate, nowhere near that of the couriers that they used to be. We're going to see in this 2 versus 2, which is hopefully going to be a little bit more balanced than a 1 versus 1, and give me a little bit more time to work with, hopefully. And hopefully we get to that point, because, you know, the thing you got to consider is you're not always going to get to do the revolt. You have to be able to defend and attack appropriately to win the game. So, we're going to keep trying this until hopefully we get a French Revolution, and I can sort of show you what sort of cards I would prioritize once you actually reach there. So we're starting out a pretty standard game. Heard, heard the deer in towards, or the elk rather, towards the town center. 
it's always a good measure you should always try to do if possible. I'm just going to get them onto the hunts now so we can maybe age up a bit quicker. I'm going to also try to look for the trade route as well. I think it's about center map on Yukon. If we can get a trading post earlier, that would be pretty good. It will help us a lot out later. Again, more crate shipments out. So I might actually balance off some of my gathering right now and maybe get one while I can. Might not be a bad idea, just saying. Now for the Mad Scout, I'm probably going to keep him at the base for right now. I kind of want to keep him alive for a little bit later. I'll show you why. The Mad Scout is actually going to have a bit of an impact once we hit the revolution. Because he... Your native scouts actually have a bit of a special role in the revolution that isn't so obvious up front. But we'll see it when it comes. I'm going to get this train post out now, and I'm going to chop just enough to get a house down. And once we do that, it's all back on to food so we can age up as quick as we possibly can. Just scroll down to New Polyonic because I had an old deck that I used long ago when I was first doing an upload on the revolution to see you know what what this revolution is and look at some of the cool cards that it has now that we're going in a bit more professionally to assess the power that it has in reality I just wanted to make a more optimal deck that I would use with this type of a revolution I mean the I think the goal here would probably be to try to go up with like uh, 13, maybe 14 couriers if possible. Hopefully we can do that. Now the train post I did get over here, actually over here is going to be quite useful. It's going to let us get quite a bit of XP out so that we can actually keep up with our crate shipments easier. And as you've seen with my fast terrain, um, Imperial strategies on Wars of Liberty. Train posts can actually play a pretty significant role in um, getting up quicker and being able to do better timings with your strategies. I don't know. I mean, it looks like we're pretty behind. I can I'm pretty behind in the age up time. So to me, why don't we just get an extra courier just to be on the safe side and be a bit greedy? I guess. Also, we may as well pick this 100 food up as well. This is going to be pretty handy. Now, when I was first conceiving this deck, I used to have the French Embassy here as well. But as I explored the French Revolution a bit more, what I found out was, is actually you get one once you reach the Napoleonic era. So I figured that's a bit of a waste. You know, let's try to pretty much save it for when we might need it a little bit later, right? Okay, so we're finally aging up. Um, I'm going to actually do a bit of chopping work here, get a market up, maybe get some hunting dogs up to help us get up a bit quicker. And also, in case we don't get to do a roll, the waste will be in a bit more of a stable place economically. Also, another thing to remember, you, uh, Blunderbuss and Great Code actually does affect your revolutionary villagers as well. So again, those texts at some point is pretty, it's going to be a pretty good decision. You don't have to get them right now unless you're doing it for defensive reasons, but later on, pick up those technologies, they will give you a bit of extra attack and HP on your revolutionary villagers. That's a neat little tip to have when you're doing this. I can board the market now, so I'm just going to start building that right now. Hopefully we don't have too big of a rushers here. I'm just going to sort of play passive aggressive at this point, and just not try to do too much to these opponents. I don't know if they're high level, low level, but, you know, I'm going to let them have some let them do whatever they want to do. If we need to defend, we'll defend. But hopefully we don't have to and we can just go up quicker. Yeah. I'm just going to pick up the coin right now. I mean, we got 400 wood here from the Core Masters. So I can get my steel traps now. 
I'm also not looking to get very aggressive yet, so I'm trying to get up a little bit quicker. You know, I mean, I'm not so worried about preparing military at this point unless we really need it. And I might as well pick up placer mines as well. That'll be a bit more helpful to us while we're trying to age up. Alright, so this one's a bit isolated. So I'm going to try to go up towards these animals here since it's a little bit more fruitful in the long run. Yep. And at this point, I guess we could try to get these crates a little bit slower. You know what I mean? Because our food's going to take a bit to get up anyways right now. Skill trap should help us get up a bit quicker, but you know how it is. You know how it is in this uh you don't always get the perfect macro that you're looking for. Now in the meantime, I'm probably just going to pick up Royal Fencing School now. Just for the sake of getting that upgrade out of the way, and it will also give us a bit of defense as well. These uh, French natives actually play a pretty significant role in the Napoleonic Era Revolution, as they actually get upgraded to new variants, like the Royal Carbonier and the... I think it's the Mount Carbonier. Basically, Napoleonic variants of these older style of French units. They have a lot of better abilities, better stats, so the fact that we we'll already have a couple to work with thanks to this card, these Royal Musketeers, it's actually going to be pretty helpful to us. When it comes to Capital Age, I always suggest going for the covered wagon with this revolt. That way, you um, can certainly benefit from from having an extra TC and getting some extra bills out. Right? So it looks like we have a bit of pressure here, so I might have to do a bit of defending work. Maybe get a Rax up to help with that. Somebody have his Musketeers is going to be pretty helpful for that. I'm not too worried here, but what might be helpful is to get a unit shipping in the capital age and maybe not get it right now. Because I prepared a lot of nice unit shipments in capital age for this very situation. Maybe ship out some dragoons perhaps if we need them. He's going to keep trying to pressure me it looks like. So we got to be careful of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, 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 he's going to kill me right now, it looks like. He's not, he's not playing passively, that's for sure, so. I mean, we will get up, we will get the covered wagon, and we'll hopefully be able to defend this pretty easily. I mean, the SARS are great for rain, but they're not the best at siege until you get, get pillaged later. Get some wood while I, get some coin while I can. Alright, we're going to be up pretty soon, we can get some Dragoons, and if he comes back with these Asars at all, I'll just micro them down. Should be a pretty easy cleanup. Yeah, see, we're getting a lot of food right now, and this is why having a second town center is actually pretty good. You know what I mean? It's going to do you a lot of benefits. And while we're doing that, we're also going to get these Dragoons out for defensive purposes because it looks like this kid is not going to cooperate with what we want to do. And we're going to probably need a bit of defense. Now having the second town center, what this is going to let us do is get bills out at double the rate effectively. And when we do revolt, we're going to have more of those nice sandwiches to work with then. That's key. Yep, sticking together is important in any matchup. It's gonna try to be the CC right now, but it's kind of a kind of a fallacy because I'm just gonna micro him out of here. Exactly like that. Now you can't really do much to me right now, so we're just gonna grab this coin and get back to work because uh, we. Well, let's, let's get some more to the food while we can. Yeah, that's why I'd say. Get some more to the food while we can. Because we're going to need... I'm going to keep my dragoons up here, so if he tries to pull any funny stuff up there, I'm going to at least be able to deter him and retreat. Yeah, I'm going to get my coin now. 
then we're going to probably get the Tycoon, I would assume, because we definitely that will take care of one of the necessary resources to pull off the initial revolt, we, the French Republic we, revolt. We. And, yeah, I mean, if, if we gather that coin in time, if we don't gather it in time, uh, at least we'll have another queue of couriers ready to go. As you can see here, things are pretty stable, you know what I mean? Not too worried. Hmm. Yeah, is he gonna... Does he want to push right now? I mean, I'm, I hopefully don't want to push yet. Unless we have to, if it's an emergency, maybe. But, uh... Let me see... Okay, so we got enough to go up. Now, probably with the... I want to do is, is get some wood. We're definitely going to need that to do the next part of the revolution. Now, one thing I do want to try... Well, wait a second. We actually have to get something to do that, right? Oh, that's cool. It's nice of the reserve to sort of give us a warning, you know what I mean, without really giving up too much economy. That was kind of, kind of a secret tactic I did, I guess. Um, now what we, now what I kind of want to do is I want to get some more wood, both for the revolt and to get a heavy fortification, so we can plop down some fully upgraded towers when we need them. That's going to be quite helpful in defense. Yeah, I'm going to get my dragoons up here right away in case he does a sort of swooping around with those hussars. And by the time we get up to the industrial age, we will be able to have enough wood to revolt and hopefully queue up some native scouts as well for another reason. Yeah. Is he ready to push? Alright. Yes. Alright, I'll help. If you need help, man, we'll do it. Okay, man, let's do it. Put some pressure on this boy, man. Uh, don't want to do it, but uh, I guess we'll give a little help. Advance fortifications. Get that out before we commence the revolt. Yep. And actually, what we might actually end up needing to do is actually stick with the French Revolution revolt initially. Hopefully not. I'm just sticking around them, trying to, yep, take some shots, get some shots in, yep, keep this flinch under wraps, get some more native scouts actually would be good, yep, see native scouts are good to get before you do the revolt because they'll turn into a more powerful unit upon the revolution's completion, that's why having that is generally a pretty good idea. I don't know if we're actually going to get to see the uh, French Napoleonic out of this game, but hopefully we'll see it in another one. We might at least see the French Republic one. Yeah, I mean, I'm just sort of protecting, protecting right now. Oh, skirmies. Yep, get away from that. You don't want to do a skirmies. <laughs> no skirmies, that's not good. Get, get chopping again. Maybe the tweet. We're going. Yep. yep. Just so he knows what the plan is. Then, not exactly going in with this few units on purpose. Because we kind of want to do the revolt if possible. Now for native scouts. How many of these do we got? We got about five of them, right? And how many do we need to do the revolution? We're almost there, I would say. I mean, we're actually going to go up with a fair amount of Sanchez, which is kind of nice. Now, what I don't know is, is if we should actually shift towards gold, get some mining done before that. Because what we might be able to do if we're smart is we might... Yeah, see, that's going to be a little annoying. 
got cut down by bill count a little more than I wanted to, but what can you do? You know what I mean? These guys are playing hardball here. And this is actually a perfect example of a realistic scenario, right? These people aren't actors here trying to help me do something. These are just random folks just playing normally. Just, and that will help you understand, like, if you want to do this for real, what can you expect from it? See, these turned into the Claros. These are basically decent Lancer units. And now they're Sanctuates. And with the Sanctuates, well, let's see here. This is actually the cost to get to the Napoleonic era. So what I might have to do now is get in the factory now, ship back to food, and we might actually be all set to... Yeah. I think I'm going to do that, actually. And this m might actually be a viable way of hitting that, uh, hitting that age up. That revolt up, rather. Yeah. And look, since we have some extra wood to work with, let's get some more Aquilas, too. This is some pretty decent, uh, pretty decent cav units that we can use to defend a bit with, right? Yeah, I mean, we're gonna have enough to revolt, I think, by, by a long shot, you know what I mean? I'm not too worried about that. I was initially concerned about, um, revolt time, like how quick we could actually acquire it, but turns out, just by playing the normal FI, we were actually able to hit pretty good timing on it. So how much do we need to actually get that, uh, age up, basically, uh, Let's get a couple more revolutionary builds since we can. Yep. And then we're gonna hit the next one after this. Got a decent factory pumping out stuff. Where is all the village? Oh! Oh! Oh yeah! Yeah! I, this is the bul old Bulgaria problem with the, um, Bulgaria system. In Wars of Liberty, back, they used to have an infantry tag, and basically when you call your troops forward, it just moves them all forward, so. That's annoying. It's annoying, but it's alright. And I mean, we might need it a little bit later, so I can't complain too much. Uh, yep. We're almost there. I just want to hit the threshold for it. How much, how much more? Well, so, there. Oh, yep. Yep, I'm gonna do a bit of help and work up. Yeah, I'm just gonna charge in with the whole. Do a bit of waiting work with these, yeah. This is this will be a good test to see how good they really are. Um oh. It's alright. I mean we can uh we'll be able to go up any second now, basically. Now the funny part's going to be seeing um, how one can be, what I'm going to do to prepare here, unfortunately how I did want to cooperate here, it's probably going, what the, what are you doing man? And this is exactly something you need to consider when you're doing this as well, is when is it feasible to actually acquire this revolution, right? I'm going for the quick method here just to showcase it, some of the pitfalls of it. And I'm going to queue up some of the musketeers here, hopefully. Oh, these are Sunar Cavalry. Maybe take out those if we can. Get some HP boost on the uh, Sandwich. I guess it's about time that we can actually acquire that um, tech. Right. So, uh, let's go in this way, actually. I'm going to get this right now, and I'll maybe get to show you some of the carbon irons, how good they are. They're actually pretty solid. Oh, nice! Look, look at all the resources you get off the bat. This is actually quite good. And, um, get some mounted rifles, hopefully. Kind of the best thing I could think of getting right now. Oh, yeah! That's an old pitfall you have to worry about with this, is, um... These guys actually cost uh, population as well because of the 
ready with some more. So I'm gonna make some carbonars. We also have some mounted riflemen coming out as well. Hopefully that's good enough to defend here. See what we can pull off. Oh, those are actually good shots. Yeah, they actually do quite a bit of damage. Believe it or not. Yep, see, we'll try our best here, but this is just a good sign for you is the player coming into it, like, when should I actually acquire this revolt? Should it be early game, mid game, like, is it better with more players on my team, is it better with less players on my team, like, when do you actually want to acquire this, right? Because it, it seems like, from my understanding, it's better to get with, like, maybe more players on your team, you know? And maybe in a situation where you know you're not under extreme pressure. Yep, see here how, how effective, see the units are actually quite solid, you know what I mean? So what's this cost? You're the flame limit for that hammer. That's weird. Well anyways, um, let's see. The, uh, you are the military year one that you cannot train anymore. That's, I never heard of that before. I don't know if that's expected or. You are the military unit one. This is very strange indeed. I don't know what that's about. I definitely don't like that though because it um, definitely puts me in a curious situation. Uh, oh, this actually works, yeah, I'll send this. Uh, this uh, I could send this for some reason, but uh, that didn't work so much. So this sort of gives you an idea of what, it, what this revolution does. Now, because of the situation, I wasn't really able to go deeply into the macro side of maintaining yourself. But as you can see, in some situations, like if your ally doesn't resign on you and quit, you might actually be able to do some damage with this. Being able to send out armies of uh, infantry like this, pretty good. Now I don't understand what it means by a military unit on it, what that actually entails. Because I never quite heard of that before with this revolt. I thought you could basically make as much things as you want. But I guess not. Well, I guess we'll just try to stall it out a bit more. So we can... Yeah, but as you can see here, in general, you typically want to do this a little bit later when you know you're a bit more set up, typically. Right, like if... I'll do another one and see, you know, maybe we get to show the macro a bit more of those cards I would get in order to set up my macro. But yeah, I mean they played pretty well so I'll give them that. They definitely kept up the pressure good. And they, it was actually a very good demonstration of when you might not want to go with this option. Right? Because as you can see here, if your enemy is fully committed to killing you in the matchup and they're not booming, you might actually not want to go with this because you can there's that moment of delay where you're not ready to deal with things. Now if these guys were like say Dutch and British and they wanted to sit back and boom for a while, or Portuguese, yeah I think you better have a better shot of making more out of this because you can get some of these more essential cards like Genet troops as well as Cantonieres. These are two really good economic cards that can basically run your entire economy in the Napoleonic era. Combine that with factories, combine that with maybe even some of the more economical Sanchoet cards here, as well as these. You, p you should get these as soon as you possibly can as well. Reign of Robespierre, as well as Cult of the Supreme Being. These will give you better XP, as well as gathering rates in general. So, you know, these are going to be your friends. 
we'll see if we can get to do that a bit more in the next match. Yeah. I'm, I'm at least happy that we got to actually do that, do the revolution successfully. That was a good start. Right. Now let's see, um, I'm going to try to see if we can find a 3v3, if possible. You know, a 3v3, maybe even a 2v2, I don't know. Like, a 2v2 could be a bit precarious to pull this off. Uh, I don't know if a 4v4 could, could have some luck in it. Maybe it does. You know what, maybe, maybe a 4v4 would let us get more of the upgrades earlier on, right? Give us a bit of wiggle room. Yeah, which we might actually need. Yeah, so we'll see. We do a 4v4, right? And these ELOs, you know, they're not the best, which we kind of want, right? We don't want any 18 ELO, 1.8 K ELOs again, ruining in the day, so. These people are kind of on par with me, which is good. When you, ever you want to do really weird strategies you're not used to, you should always do it with people that are at least at your level, if not lower. So that maybe you got a bit of wiggle room time to see, get your timing out straight and maybe make it work. But, as you saw in the last game, you have to really time out when you get this French Revolution. Now, another hypothesis, hypothesis I have is, is, um, Maybe you want to get it later, right? Because as you saw right there, I went with the standard French FI recipe of, you know, three couriers, 700 wood, 700 coin, followed by 1,000 coin and wood, depending on what situation you're in, maybe you need a unit ship, and then get advanced fortifications and uh, the fencing school card at your leisure if you can in time. If you can, oh well good thing to get though. So, you know, you, you kind of get an understanding of how you would want to do it if you wanted to do it super quickly, right? Now, if you didn't need to do it super quickly, there is another option. You can sit back for a little while and get unit upgrades, in particular ones that you do not get with yourself in the revolution. Now, some of the more French unique upgrade cards, like Grivabeel system for artillery, as well as the French Royal Army that benefits your halberdiers and musketeers. Those you actually get as part of the Napoleonic era. So if you didn't get a chance to ship those earlier, now you can ship them now. Right, and that means you can leave those out of your deck, which gives you a little bit of room for units, a little bit of room for the things that you need. Because I think, uh, compared to a lot of the revolutions, um, the Napoleonic era one actually has a lot of utility and can actually be sustainable, right? You can actually maintain a decent economy for a while, as long as you can maintain sort of map control, right? Of course you get some sorts of prickles you can work with, like, uh, field, field hospitals providing you food, as well as factories, but if you can get a lot of trees and corn, gold mines, ideally, you can actually use your grenadiers with the Jenny troops to actually mine and chop wood. And they do it at a pretty decent rate as well, especially in higher numbers. Another thing to keep in mind is to help you sort of boom your economy up, you actually get access to the French Royal Decree texts, uh, access to them without having the Royal Are Decree card sent if you reach the Napoleonic era. So yes. you can actually send the Young Guard and send large groups of Grandiers to jumpstart your wood and coin eco for sums of food right away. That's one thing to consider. So that way you don't necessarily have to train out your own Grandiers. You can just use the ones from the Royal Guard. And then you can move all your factories on the food, combine with the field hospitals, and now you have a decent economy you can do some work with, right? That's sort of the idea. That's sort of the idea you want to have when you're doing these sorts of revolts. We're going to try this in a 4 versus 4, where we have, you know, the most chance of holding back, hopefully, without too much pressure, right? 
assuming they don't go for a mega assault on us, right? And I see one of them is Portuguese, so hopefully that means we're not going to have to deal with a lot. Also with Japan, also with Dutch, these are very defensive sieves who apparently decided to leave, but um, if we get a, end up getting the Portuguese and the Japanese and the Dutch on an opposing team, hopefully they can, uh, we can, um, boom, right? So I don't know what's happened here, everybody's just running away, I guess. Uh, what happened? I guess I'll wait too. Um, I would love to get a, like a, um, love to get a, love to get one in, in a larger team. At least a game where we know that, uh, maybe this is the area we want to go. Uh, let me refresh, get a bit of an accurate, uh, I want to get a larger team, like a 4 versus 4. You know, we might actually want to, hmm. We might actually want to go for the TR option, uh, maybe, maybe TR, or no, let's just do a regular 3 versus 3, because I think most of you want to see how this does in competitive, right, you want to understand if we're doing a team game, if we're doing a 1v1, what's the feasibility of us doing this in a match, right, as you saw in the first game, Maybe not the best choice to do in a 1v1. At least, like a fast industrial. You could do a semi-fast industrial. Make some more units. And play more actively. Before reaching that revolution. Huh, where's everybody going? What's going on today? Um, but, yeah. The idea that you want to have while you're doing these games trying to do the French Napoleonic era revolution is, is um, making sure you send yourself up for success and not send yourself up for failure where you don't have enough defenses to defend your area. Like in that game, you know, if that wasn't a 2, if that wasn't a 2v2, I might have actually had trouble even reaching that revolution, right? I had, luckily had a teammate with some jazz areas to defend me. So I could get that revolution, as, and as you saw, just because you reach a revolution doesn't mean, you know, you're going to start winning, right? The revolt isn't an automatic win condition. You actually need to get some of those cards out and get some of those upgrades before you even really start to build back on it. It's definitely a fun revolution. It's, you basically become a new sub effectively, being able to make new units ship things you know on my current ships. Uh, in that sense, it's a very fun experience. Now, in terms of practicality, we're going to have to see in this larger game with hopefully, you know, hopefully not as much pressure to deal with. We can only hope, but we got Russians to deal with, we got Ebbets, so we do get a Malta, though, so that's a little promising. The Malta probably isn't too aggressive, maybe not the Ethiopian Zaper, but we'll have to see. I just want to get to show a bit of the macro side of when, once we do hit the French Napoleonic uh, Revolution, what are we supposed to do exactly? Why are we there? What's the point? You know? Are you ready? It's probably what most people want to figure out, right? Like, why am I doing this to myself, basically? Is there a win? Is there a benefit to it, right? Than just playing standard Imperial Age play with the French or going for a more immediate revolt, like the Egyptian one or another one. Like, what's the point of going for this elongated process? And that's hopefully what I hope to answer, you know, in last game and as well as this one. Maybe another one, you know. I kind of want to scope it out and see, is the Napoleonic uh, Revolution something that you should use? Yes. Right? And what sorts of ways should you attain it? As you saw before, I went for a standard French uh, fast industrial into a revolt, right? Pretty standard, just regular crates that you would already be using anyways. But we'll see. 
Hopefully this game loads up and people don't start running for the hills, but we'll see. You can only hope for the best, right? I might give them a... Uh, I don't know if I need to give them a warning. Hopefully we can play good enough to not let anyone know what, what we're doing here. But if I feel like, you know, we have to give them a bit of a warning, I will. Just let them know what the game plan is and what we're doing. So they know, okay, we might have to play a bit more defensively for our ally here as he's doing doing his work. At per per view in Mr. Ibex. That's a good good location to start queuing on the couriers. I mean probably I'm just looking to get good placements here, honestly, right? So I think this is this might be a good placement right yeah, that's good. Now I don't know about trade routes here. Where the trade route oh this is the can, right? So yeah, we do is this the can? Do we get the no this isn't the can, but we do get a bunch of trade routes that segue out like this. So let's pick up a TP. You know, we'll I'll pick up this TP here. Get this building and do a bit of chopping work, right? Because all we really need to do here is just maintain the queue of villagers as best as we can. You know, because once you lose your queue of villagers and you have a loss of villager seconds, that's when you start to see things fall apart a bit in your gameplay. Grab as much treasures as well. That's going to be another important thing I'm going to need to do. Get those treasures out. Oh. Well, here it's alright because I guess the Mayor Scout is helping protect some of my explorer's HP a bit. Also, I'm gonna try to get a house up as quickly as I can. Get that up ASAP, and that way we can keep the villager queue going. And Alright, now we don't even have to stay on the wood anymore for now. We can stay off the wood. Just keep doing what we we're doing. Yeah. Alright, uh, let me get some more in the queue. I think we're good right now. If we can take this TP here, you know, next to an ally, next to a friend, that would be pretty smart, I think. Could try it on the way up, perhaps, because, you know, the more shipments we get with the revolution, right, the better it is, the more we're going to get out of it. The less shipments we get, the more horrible a revolution is going to be in the more you're better off going to be wishing you played more standard, right? So we'll see what we can do there. If we can snag another one of these TPs up. It's going to take a while to get to that age up, so... Let's grab a nice pet tiger here to help do some combat justice for us. And, you know, hope... And also gain a bit of XP from uh, fighting, right? Killing treasure guardians does count as more XP for us. So the more little fights you can get into, it's probably better that way. Yeah, I'm gonna stand right over here. Try to deny him any sort of trading post over here if he wants to go for that. The enemy, that is. If an ally wants his trading post, uh... Oh, he's French too, so he's, he's still thinking the same way I am. Because French really do well with the starting trading posts. And yeah, I'm gonna go up with the core master, get some wood. Yeah, I'm gonna get these guys off of the food right now. I'm gonna do a little bit more hunting to get my courier in the queue. Also, get some mining going. Mining would be good. We could use some, definitely use some mining. Hey, if I could take all three of these TPs and not die because of it, that would actually be perfect. That would really help me out a lot. And because I'm the French and the way I just constructed this deck, the more shipments even helps me before the revolution too, because that means I could send more unit shipments as needed to sustain me. Right? And now that I'm thinking about, maybe I don't want to go for a market this time, right? Because I feel like maybe we're going to be doing so much free stuff with the woods and maybe it's not justified quite yet. 
So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to just run around and get as much stuff as I can. Basically, uh, yeah. I'll just keep chopping until about now. Yes, then we can get back to food production, I think. We could pick up hunting dogs a bit later if we got time, but, uh, you know what? I think we've got some time to do that. It'll be alright. I think it'll be good to do that. So, we'll do that, I think. Because, I mean, yeah, by the time we get here, we'll already have the wood needed for TP number, number three. Yep, and I'm going to be getting uh, probably some range units right now, just for defensive sake. Yeah, yeah, I'm just hurting, man. Uh, don't mind me. Don't mind me and what I'm doing, you know? <laughs> the way I look at it is when people do that is, you know, why don't you do some macro work yourself before you start, like, AFK, AFK. But I get it, you know. He just wants to make sure I'm not wasting too many villager seconds, which is nice. Yeah, I'm going to have some crossbowmen here to defend. So we're going to have another TP to work with. Good. So we're actually in pretty good shape, I think, because, um... Where's my x bowmen? Where did they go? Where are my archers? Where did my archers go? Did I send archers? What happened to them? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Like, didn't I send a group of archers out here? Something's not right. Uh, oh boy, this card might actually be bugged. Um, yeah, I don't see any archers out. So, did I get caught in the trap? Maybe I got caught in the trap, it looks like. Oh, God. That's not good. That needs to be reported, man. I mean, I just wasted a shipping on that. That's kind of sad. Man, that's really sad. Gotta fix these things, man. You know what I mean? I don't check, I don't check the, the bug, the change logs every patch, so... They need to really uh, fix that like ASAP if that's the case. You can't really afford that because, see, I just wasted a ship and I could have shipped Hussars to deal with that. And, um, you know, that could have dealt with that. That might have actually just sabotaged my match at that point, you know what I mean? I just wasted a ship that I could have put in the hand cab. I'm going to just send these natives for now. Yeah. I'm just going to send that for now. Yeah, I think I might just sabotage my entire match, just wasting a shipment on something that didn't actually deliver anything, right? Full security. That's pretty bad, you know? I don't know why that's messed up like that, because um, it's such a basic card from the Asian dynasties, I don't know how they somehow caused it to not deliver any units, but... If that's the case, indeed, I'm actually going to get that cut out of my deck for the next match that I do. That's, that's, that's kind of a cheat right there. Putting a card in there and it ends up not delivering anything. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, kind of cheating against me, really, because, you know, shipments don't come easy, man. You know what I mean? And see, I just lost the TP because of that too, so, right, because I didn't have any units to respond to that. That was kind of a loss for me, that I could have, you know, avoided. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, well, these are actually not friends, so you gotta be careful. Well, I'll put these guys in, no, these are actually, alright, it's an anti cap alright. Good to, good to know. Yeah, that's, uh... Yeah, what a waste. <laughs> yeah, that is a waste. Because that's a shipment. That I could have saved up actually for age 3 and banked up. But now I'm going to send some skirmies. We'll make up for it if we can, right? Certainly was a detrimental hit. 
that I was not expecting, but um, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. I, th I think we'll be alright. You know what I mean? I have two shipping to screws, I have Falks, I, I totally know how to dedicate to H3 as the French without um, taking too many losses. And I don't know if we're going to have to add in any skirms beyond the ones that we get out of this, but hopefully we don't have to. Hopefully we can save the results we get to this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Let me see. I don't want to go in until I see what where his army is, right? Play as a group if you can. That's sort of the golden rule when any one of these engagements is just try to stick to your Stick together with your team if you can. I'm gonna get some dragoons as well. You know, I if I can um, keep a balanced force here to defend, that would be good. Because I can totally train my skirmishes now if I have to. And hopefully we, you know, get as many of these couriers as we can before we revolt. Because that'll certainly benefit me. That'll be very helpful to me. If we can do that. Right. Where's, his, where's the enemy army at? Are they just sort of hanging out around there? I mean, see, they're doing a pretty similar comp, I would say. I mean, he's got some dragoons, I got some skirms. So, pretty good comp to go with. Uh, I'll just keep this in the queue, just in case we need it. Uh, what now? Um, do you really want to push south? Maybe. Oh god, I, I spotted something. I spotted one bad threat. Oh, cool. Cool, I found him before he found me. That's good. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Um, gotta get those uh, falconets out there. That's, that's the problem. Let me see if I can uh, take out this falc. Oh crap. I'm getting so pumped by my own buildings. It's so that's always lovely, right? When your own buildings work against you. Yeah, try to stagger a bit too. You know, yep, get, some, get my own belts out of Corsairs actually, that would be even better. Yeah, I don't know, I mean, I'm taking the full brunt here of everything, so I don't know if we're gonna last very long at this point. I mean, what can I do? They're defending their cannons very well. No, I would move some over into here so we can get some more range attack out of these TCs, yeah. Wait a minute, did I just send, uh... Oh, no, I didn't. I was gonna be like, you know, that's two shipments that I've sent today that didn't actually send me what they were supposed to. That, that is totally cheating. Feeding me out of basically just operating here. That's definitely not right. You know, because I could definitely send like 700 food and would have been in much better shape right now. Potentially, than I am right now with this. I don't know what to do right now because I seem to be getting swarmed here and not much support's coming. So, like, where's my team right now? Where are you? Will you come? Hopefully they you can do a little bit of splash work here if we can. <laughs> yeah, I just don't know. Um, looks like I got got a bit bamboozled here by these guys. So, uh, I'm gonna retreat. If possible. You know what I mean, retreat. I mean, I could still put up a pretty decent defense for them if I have to. These guys are good, these decent military. I mean, you can shoot and kill stuff with them. You don't want to engage too long, though, but, uh, you can in... Yeah, I'm just... See, could he even put... Did he put gates up for me? Wait a second. Wait a second. This could be even give me gates? What, what is this garbage, man? What is this garbage, man? Seriously. Comes me anyway. Yeah, it was. Oh my god. 
Like really? Oh, I got I got a PC block. That's good. Now I'm gonna get some uh, wood. We're gonna defend this so far. Might actually get three TCs, you know, and make up last time if I can get my food crate out. Yeah, no, that's not gonna work, man. It's just too, 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 uh, too feisty down here. Hopefully, we get another in the play arcade revolt, but you never know. I mean, that's why you gotta play flexibly. You know, I mean, I'm here trying to do a particular thing, and then, you know. This is a realistic match and people are gonna try to kill you, so you need to Yeah, I just don't know. I think I'm I think I'm about out at this point. Yeah, it just doesn't work. <laughs> so yeah, 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 I'm a noob. <laughs> yeah, probably sure I didn't know what I was gonna do first because uh that wasn't a good uh, situation to be in. See, I guess it really depends on what the Civ matchup is and what the Civs want to do. Like, if they're Portuguese and they're going to camp at home, then i probably go for that. But, um, yeah. Yeah, well, let's try another one. We'll try an even different one. Uh, okay. Let me try this. Look at these. This is probably what I need right here. This is probably the type of match we really want to try it out in is, um, one way you know it's not going to be directly on Aren't you. you quite yeah, and we even got a Portuguese here, so we know we're not going to get totally rushed out of the yin <laughs> Right out of the gate, so, uh... Yep, yeah, this is definitely good for you, though, because, you know, this is sort of when you know, like, when it's appropriate to try to acquire when the point I get a revolt. Like, what sorts of sims is it safe to deal with? Oh, yep. Yeah, yeah I, that's totally understandable. But, um... I'm gonna try to go for a different room. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Is there a place for me to go? Is there a place for me to go? Is there a place for me to go? Maybe this might be, might be appropriate here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I could actually try this, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, let's try it. Let's try to do it against some bots in a comp stop. This might be more, uh, a little bit, a little bit more, um, viable, I would say. We'll see. Yeah, might actually want to do it against some bots, because, uh, I think maybe the bots will be a little more predictable to what we're trying to do here. So it would be a little bit more accurate to what I was doing last uh, last night with my build. Yeah, I really just want to get to do one match where I really get to hash out for you what sort of order of macro you want to do within the Napoleonic era. Just want to know how to acquire it quickly. And certainly if you're taking a little bit more time fighting with musketeers and so forth, then you could go into it a bit easier probably than what I did. I just wanted to show you how to do it quickly. But now, I guess sort of the goal is, is uh... Yep, uh... Okay... Who is your friend? You mean your... Yeah, this is, uh, this is kind of sad. Tension deficit is high today. But, um... I don't know. I mean, this is, uh, some live gameplay here. I'm just trying to get, you know, the most out of 
teaching this uh, build to people from the users that were looking to get some pointers on it. Right, and this is sort of my first day of doing it in real multiplayer against humans and against more difficult AI. So definitely this is going to be a very different experience than when I had against the easier AI last night just trying to reach the revolt. Not dealing with all the inner workings of defending and so forth. But you know what I can do now, which we should do right now, is um, get this out of here. This is garbage. This will not give me the units I need. So, what what can we put in there in lieu of uh, that? Um, what would be appropriate? Should probably just like uh, 700 food, you know. We can definitely use more food. Absolutely. I would think either that or couriers. But I think the food might have a bit of a quicker impact. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So I think, um... Another option would be to try this in a revolt. Try, try this in an FFA and see how far we get. That's another option. That's totally another option, and I, I definitely like that one because, you know, you're not dependent so much on teammates. Uh, I also like how you have the little fort here to defend. Yeah. Um, I don't know, though. I'm just going to browse games in the meantime. I'll just look. Yeah, see, I can look around and see if there's anything, anything more enticing that pops up. But I also like this too, I like having a bit of a delay so it's a little more passive. But I'll, I'll just stick with the FFA. Yeah, I definitely wanted to get that crossbowman card out though because I knew when I was looking at the boy is this, is that very unfair? Like, my unit shipping didn't even come to me. That is so bad. I was not expecting something so sad and embarrassing like that in the match, like, it does need to really make sure that they're watching out for this stuff, especially when it's just like an A crossbowman card. Like, if, if I want to get my A crossbowman card, I could go to the Asian dynasties and have that available to me, but here it doesn't work. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but, um definitely something to keep in mind when you're planning games. Definitely something for you to know and hopefully they fix it soon. I'm just looking to get a decent game here that I can revolt into and it's you know it's it's a mixed bag it looks like. The first one was alright because we at least got to the revolt but second one uh, not so much not quite what I was looking for, but we'll, we'll see here if we can uh, do something, right? I want to do something, somewhere, right? That's all I want, that's all I care about, I just want to find a game that we can do this. Hopefully get some human players, or extreme AI, I prefer to do it against human players so it's a bit more accurate to analyze for the users doing it. I don't really want to do a TR, but I also don't want to lose it. I want to sort of sweet spot as best as I can. Right, yeah, that's that's the idea. Um, uh, let's see. Fun and no lag. That's fun. You don't want lag. It's, uh, Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's go for it. Um, let's see. Well, where is the room? Can I join it? That's alright. I mean, we can join back in if we have to. Uh, yeah. Let's go in there and do it. Yeah, here we go. A perfect uh, 4v... perfect 3v3. 
Are you ready? Yeah, um, we'll try it, you know what I mean? I'm gonna just keep trying until I get another Napoleonic Air Revolt to show to you. Alright, so this is Himalayas, so we got a decent trade route to work with, right? So, uh, it's also a little bit more defensible, too. It's not exactly a big aggro map, so we might not have to deal with that, that, that garbage right away, right? We can actually see how well, um, yeah. And now that that code's over, now you're going to get a bit of an accurate reading of a properly done shipment, how to do it. I'm going to herd Ibex in over here. Get Ibex close to the PC if possible. Uh, that's it. I mean, we'll have to do because, you know I mean, you can't waste too much of your food. Right, you can try your best to get the herding in, but if, you know, you don't get the best of what life, that's fine too. Now this is a very good treasure right here because what this lets me do is it lets me get a trading post up and not have to commit so much macro to the um I'll put one over here for now, but uh see I don't actually have to commit as much to the trees now because the treasure is basically doing most of the work for me now. Right, I can age up a bit quicker and maybe even get an extra trading post in. Which would be really helpful in this situation. Yeah, that, that, that'll be good, you know, because at the end of the day, when you do these sorts of builds with revolutions, the more trading posts, the better, as well as the quicker the age up the better. Yeah, I'm going to go for this one right now. Also, get that house up as well. That's going to be very important. And now what I I wish like I might be able to do is get that wood up there relatively. Uh, I don't know. I guess I could come back up real quickly and grab that wood. Any other wood around I could grab anywhere? Um, that I could really use some wood, some nice long wood if possible. But yeah, I guess. Um, also, let's get these guys off of the trees. We'll, we'll, we'll chop later if we have to. Let's just get that age up going. Yeah, I'll, I'll come up and just grab that. Um. Well, this these are just monkeys. I mean, the monkeys don't do a lot of damage. So, you know, we could kill these monkeys pretty easily. I'm not too worried about that. We'll just kill the monkeys like that. Get the coin. And we can get some wood up there. See, I'm what I'm trying to do is get as much XP as possible. I'm trying to farm as much of it as we can early. Because the more of that XP I can farm up, the more that's going to benefit me when I hit the revolt. And now this time, I'm not wasting a ship, and I know to go right for the Hussars, and I can get some crates. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not falling for the silly bugs. Yep, um, mayhaps you go up with an extra, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna actually go for some wood chopping now. Chopping would be pretty helpful. Yeah, chopping would be quite helpful. I got about seven on the villiers right now. Let's get some more chopping. You know, I want to kind of be able to get the second TP when I arrive there. Yeah. General, I got enough to... Yep, we'll hit it just in about enough time to do that, yeah. Great. Great. This is just a general lesson of playing French in general for you. This isn't even a revolution related thing. Also, we're going to need some gold as well to get some hunting dogs, maybe, because I think I want to go for that this time, be a little bit more economical, play a bit more carefully. Well, we'll get some more gold out of here. What's this? Is that 
useful. Yeah, that's certainly useful. Can't Thank get you. that quite yet. We'll definitely cut down the amount of mining work I'll have to do. Which is nice. Uh, you know, let's, let's uh, just use the wood we got here to make the market. I'm just going to go for wood and coin, I think. Play pretty, pretty standard. <laughs> Nothing too fancy. And then we'll have enough wood to work with, and then I'll have enough coin to work with when I need it. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a perfect plan, actually. And then I can even get a production going down as well in time. Because I think it, it would be good to have some sort of musketeers open right now for defense. And that could help out Blader as well. Because, see, there is a nice little card called the 100 Days, not the 100 Days mod, that exists with the Napoleonic era. The Blacks who lets us acquire a large group of musketeers if enough of them die, right? Up to 100. So if 100 musketeers died during the match, that card will send about 100 musketeers, actually, which is quite good. But it makes them also weaker, so... You really don't want to send it up until your way to do it is a finishing blow to your enemy. That is definitely something you need to keep in mind, but the only do it if you want to do it as a finisher. If you're not going to do it as a finisher, maybe not the best option. I do have half the trade route though, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Right, that's pretty good. I'm going to play a bit more safely now and get some sort of musketeers here to defend if we need to ship anything in. In the meantime, though, we'll be able to do that pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah, we can play a bit more safely, I think, this time. You know, I was kind of distraught with how game two went, so, uh, I guess we want to make sure that doesn't happen. And we're doing pretty good right now, you know what I mean? We're defending. Oh, yep, yep, see, Musketeer is perfect. I'll be able to help out with that. No problem. That is perfect. Yeah, they'll do perfect job defending that. Yeah. Now, the thing you gotta watch out for is when you defend your friends, you can't defend yourself as much, you know what I mean? That's, that's where team games can kind of go south, where you have to do all the defending work, you know what I mean? How, where does that put you in your defenses at? Right? Because you clearly need to defend your own base to a reasonable amount. Otherwise, you're going to have issues. I'm just going to get amalgamation just so we have it, so we can maybe get some more production out in time. Yeah. See, I have a decent amount of troops right now, so I'm feeling pretty alright right now. I'd be in danger with dealing with, like, light infantry, but uh, as far as like raiding Hussars is concerned, yeah, I'm not too scared about that right now. Well, we could get this right now as well. This would be a good good addition to my collection of cards. It'll also help the Musketeers come out a bit quicker as well, if we want to add more in. Get that town center wagon. We could definitely use that to our advantage. Yeah, we're doing pretty good right now. This is actually looking a little bit more viable than the first game, right? Because if we do, stuff does hit the fan. I don't know what he's doing up there. I feel like I'm going to have to do something to help him. He's just not... Yeah, I'm... Coming to you. I'm going to let him know that I'm coming to him with a bit of army. You know what I mean? Now this is quite good because uh, I'm going to send a saloon just to get the gold trickle and I'm going to maybe make an artillery foundry in, in age 3. Oh god, was he? Oh, rifle eyes. Oh, he went for the Stark. Uh, no, he actually trained him, I think. Oh, jeez. Shoot that one. Shoot that one. Oh, I... Got fire fingers today. <laughs> Jesus, what is this? What is this madness? Uh, it's alright, I mean, we're doing alright now. 
Definitely we'll be doing better with the teams and uh Oh, they're going for full pressure, it looks like. Uh, going for full uh, pressure. Yep. Keep that one, yep. Get him out. Get out of here, man. Get out of here. I can be a good teammate if I want to. I choose him to be one today. Yep. Yeah, see, in numbers, it doesn't really matter as much because you're the one going to win. The numbers makes a little bit more sense. Alright, so let's get up a bit. See, see now, this is a good lesson for you. This is to show you that maybe when you're doing the front revolt, you might do it in more of a balanced, nuanced way, not as extreme in terms of getting up quicker, right? Because see, now that I'm able to get a bit of defense with the Musketeers, it's actually not as scary now worrying about if you're going to live or not to tell the tale. So yeah, I think I mentioned this in the Discord, um, but um, basically, it seems like something you want to do a little bit later when you're on a bit more stable footing, right? You know you're not in as much immediate danger. Because here we got a nice army of musketeers that we can rely on to defend ourselves. So I'm not, and I'm also the probably the highest score. So I know, hopefully I'm not gonna have to do too much work for these guys to keep them alive. So maybe we will. Um, hopefully not. Well, he can he can deal with that. I'm gonna send the food in as well. Because it's just more resources I can work with. Um, get that, get that gold. I guess get that mining done here while we can. Uh, yeah. No, no. You see, this is the problem here. This is why I always say, like, I, this is why I don't like team games because you're busy helping your friends out and you can't help yourself out. But it's like, how do you do both a lot of the time? You, you just can't. And he's coming for me too, and it's like you know. You have to be a master of micro to deal with these things. What we will get though is veteran, uh, any of these friendly guys? Cool, yes, nice. It's good to have some help. It's always good to have some help out here. Yep. Always good to get a look. Oh, yep. Um, yeah, those aren't friends, those aren't good people to have in your area. Uh, oh, shit, he's gonna go for my trade route. To take forever to do now. Oh, God. Not what I want. That weapon. What can you do? Oh, my. Jeez. That effing whore just went for my food. Jeez. Jeez. No, no, that's something we needed. <laughs> Nice. Alright, so we're doing good. Okay. Well, I wasn't good in that sense because that wasn't fair to them to have them disconnect, but, uh, at least I... I like how he was bold enough, though, to actually go for the food like that. He just didn't care, man, what the consequences were. He was just going for that food no matter what. I'm not gonna be stupid. I'm not gonna waste units. Uh, just going up on time, hopefully. Make what we have to make to defend. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep, right, that's understandable. It's totally understandable. We'll just wait back here and let them do whatever. If the Dutch guy wants to play, that'd be cool, because I can show the revolts. Oh, God, yeah. This is why I don't like Defensive Edition, by the way. You can rarely ever find a game that you exactly want to have everything go smoothly on. People disconnect, people... You get major ELO differences. It's, it's not quite, uh, quite optimal, so... We might be fishing here for a while, to, so we can actually even get to the promised land yeah 
that I'm, I'm going to keep searching and fishing for. You know what I mean? We're going to keep fishing until we get there. Because uh, that's what we set out to do today. So that's what we're going to do. Exactly. Uh, well, let's see here. Is there any good rooms to go into for this? Hmm. 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 This room is still not filled. Yeah, it's like fun and no lag. That's that that sounds good. Fun and no lag, that's that's good. Yep, that's always good. It's always good. I'm just looking to get another revolt today. You know what I mean? We got one. Now we're going to have to wait for another one. But I think the thing that we've learned so far in these other matches is uh, the sort of work you have to do before you actually hit the Napoleonic air revolt, right? Like what sorts of defenses can we do in favor of it? Because I feel like you were training musketeers earlier on. You were training musketeers earlier on is actually going to be more beneficial to you. Because you'll be able to call upon that 100 days card a lot quicker. Right, and you you can over get 100 over your regular population, which could lead you having a population of a field of about like 376 sometimes, like I saw on YouTube quite good. It's quite good to have. Um, I just wish it wasn't, you didn't have to fish so hard to find a decent lobby these days. It's crazy. So what's this? Is this AI? Uh, Alright, so is that going to be like an opposing team? Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with, fine with this. He's fine with it. I'm fine with the two. Now this could this could definitely work work to my advantage. Less human error. You know that's always good. Less human error if there's less humans. Mm -hmm. Let's hope that the kids get kid is here though because you know they're not always here and it takes forever. Yeah, fin of edition. Yeah, I just really, really want to get a revolt again. It's taken a long, long time. Yeah, I just don't know, it's, um, this is the, the lobby system. <laughs> gotta, gotta go cherry picking for some better options, it looks like. Maybe here? Cause maybe we might actually be able to start with just four, maybe, yeah. Nice, nice. FFA? That works for me. I could do FFA. At least I don't have to rely on others defending other people and I don't have to worry about, you know, dealing with team ups. Yeah, this could this might actually be an interesting experiment here to see um is F F, F him. F him for Raven. But um beyond that uh yeah an FFA might actually be the solution that we have for this issue. Oh nice, so we're going to get some more people as well. That's good. That's always good. It's always good to have more people. 
more distractions. Yeah, this is going to be good. More interesting. Yeah, it actually is better to have more players in an FFA for a multitude of reasons. Mainly because if people disconnect, if people leave, if they have to go do something, that means that the game isn't ruined as much, right? It's more manageable. Now, if you're only doing FFA with like three people and somebody has to leave, then, uh, and it turns into a 1v1, which totally sets you off balance. And then you end up stumbling and falling, usually. Yeah. Six. Wait for this to get to eight. I think I'm confident that we can reach eight. Hopefully. Hopefully we can reach eight. Yep, I'll put my green on just in case if we want to start up a six. Getting a game would be good, right? And getting a game where it doesn't end prematurely and either my or somebody else's death would be good, right? It is kind of, I think it's good for you though that you get to see a little more gameplay out of this upload though. And it's turned into a not only has it been about the Napoleon revolt, it's more or less been a lesson about playing France and also, you know, a bug finding match as well. So that it's been it's been fun with all the things it's turned into. Alright. I think we're good. I think we're good. This is gonna be free for all, so you know I just have to be responsible for myself this match, which is nice, right? It's like a 1v1 that isn't a 1v1. Right, and if we can somehow pull off a victory here in an FFA. Oh, we got wacky resources as well. That's cool. Thousand resources starting, I mean. I'll take it, you know. It's not as accurate for a competitive play, but I'll take it. I mean, it's, since it's an FFA, it probably doesn't matter too much because you're going to run into the dilemma of having more players to wipe out anyways with the revolts. So I can't say that that's a horrifying inaccuracy to have to betray in here. I definitely want to find the trade route, though, as soon as I can. Because if we got like, that much wood to work with, you definitely want to get some TPs up. Playing post would be really useful right now. Oh, this is like a treaty. Interesting. You know, I actually don't feel too bad about being a treaty because, uh... The only thing I feel bad... Can you build trade routes outside of your treaty area? That's the question. That's the question I have. Can you build outside those areas? If the answer is yes, you can build train posts outside of your starting area, then I think everything's good, but camp that's kind of sneak. And that'll uh, hold me back a bit. This is actually going to be more of an interesting experiment than I thought. Now, instead of economic shipments, we are going to be sending military shipments, right? We're going to be sending like cavalry combat, infantry combat type cards. Any sort of military improvements that we can get out onto the field, right, will be good here. So, where are the training posts here? Do we have any training posts? Is that the option? Not that's okay, but at the first we did have some train posts. We'll see. We'll see. Not that that's an enemy encampment. Well, at least it gives us more time to plan our economy out, I guess. Yeah. I should have known when we were doing Upper Andes that this must have been a treaty, treaty game. That's alright. I think it gives me actually even more time to my macro properly. Right, I can actually put, get more wood 
more uh, resources out. I can actually chop down this entire map of wood with extra population if we do it in a smart, meticulous way. Yeah, so we'll have, to, we'll have to see if I can pull that off. We'll see if I can pull that off somehow. But you never know. I'm just wondering, like, where is the, where is the meat? Where is the trading post? Like, where can I get my extra XP in? That would be really helpful to have if I can get it. It's a little extra XP to work with. Okay, so... Yeah, I mean, this is alright. Help us get to the investor a little bit quicker. What I want to do is I want to get up to the revolt as quick as possible in this situation. Yeah. Yep. That's why I wanted to. Whether it goes that way, we'll have to find out. Yeah. Uh, let me get in. Nice. Nice. Alright, so we're gonna go up with this amount of villagers, get a covered wagon, get some extra crews before we revolt, maybe. That'd be nice. Get also, we're gonna want hunting upgrades right now as well. That'd be another nice little thing to have. I just don't know if we have any trade routes on this map though, because I really don't see any trade route anywhere visibly seen anywhere on this map. Could do a little bit more scouting and walking, but we can't find any, we can't find any. Well, that means that somebody grabbed it, yeah. When you don't see a reward on there, that means somebody grabbed it. Fortunately. Yep, and I think this will be my last match if it goes successfully, and it will go successfully because it's a treaty match, it's the best possible circumstances to could pray for here. If they want to kill me, they can't kill me. If they want to take me out before I can get the revolt, they can't take me out. The worst thing could happen is like an arrow sink or something. Yeah. That's about it. That's about the only threat we have here. Not reaching the goal. Supposed to be one. Yeah, um, let's see. Gold, I think. Gold crate coming. Good. Gold crate coming. Put the TC a little bit closer to here. I mean, what you might be able to actually do is just send, uh, like this climb back. I just decided, you know, instead of doing what I was thinking of doing, let's get some combat cards out. Let's show why we even have these in here. Right, because these will actually be useful later on when we're conceiving the strategy, conceiving the build. These will be quite useful. Let's get some of those out while we can. Be quite useful to us. And it's great because it lets us, um, gives us even more time to produce more gatherers as well. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna put, a, put an RTC down here. And with that, we might actually be able to get more upgrades than we planned. Yep. Yeah, I love how this gives me just enough time to get what I want. Right? Quite, quite useful. Quite a useful circumstance for me. Uh, 
I don't know, if I'm going for the slow ops, I might actually go for the papal guy just to get, like, cheaper archaic units that I can throw in with my regular ones. It could be a nice little option. Yeah, I might just go for a full 80, 80 couriers before you even hit the revolt. Allies. Oh, we got Diplo. Cool, yep. Yes. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll support you. Yeah, sure. Sure, man. We can we can have an alliance here. It's perfectly good. More allies you got in this sort of a deck, the better I would say. Why well, not be dealing with like seven people attacking me at once? That would definitely be helpful to me. Give me a lot more to work with. Alright, so I'm probably going to send this one next year. I think it's Arsenal. This is actually quite good because it uh, will actually benefit all my like infantry units, which is this build is pretty reliant on this infantry. Let me get over here next. Maybe take out some of these. Yep. Use the resources. Yeah, I'm just farming it out to the full bill, bill count while I can. And this is certainly a fun idea for any of you that might do treaty matches or long, long games where you're not going to see a lot of action. This is going to allow me to basically hit a pretty solid economy before I even hit that result. Giving me really a good chance of um, getting everything out I want before I have to do it. And what I might actually end up doing here, which is even more bold and crazy, and crazier than what I can normally do, is I might actually get mercantilism with the church, so I get an even extra shipment so that I can uh, send out to upgrade some of my units. Like, there's, there's this map that skirmishers, musketeers. So yeah, that might actually be uh, useful to me. Yeah. So I might actually be able to utilize that. I might get that, yeah. And you actually get thoroughbreds with the uh, revolt, so I might actually end up taking this out eventually something else in there. May actually be able to put something else in the with that. Yeah, see, I'm going to get an extra ship in here that I can add on to my stuff. Yeah, yeah this is definitely an interesting experiment to see if it works. If it works, it's really, really, really cool if it does stop working for me. We'll have to see, though, how well it actually is. Yep. Yes. Yep, it sounds sounds about right. I like how he has them strangely over though. Like it's not actually using the diplomacy feature. It's a little sus, I would say, but um, maybe he just doesn't understand how the diplomacy feature works, I hope. Right, hopefully he's not... Well, he's going... Is he going for a revolt? Somebody's going for a revolt here. That's Mexico, right? Yeah, Me Mexico always revolts. Wondering, like, yeah, is somebody else going to do a revolt? 
Get these upgrades. Yeah, get all these upgrades. Out of the way. One of these upgrades you can get the boat. It's a really good upgrade to have. And then I'm going to get get the Papa Guard so we can actually get more of a value out of Allergic. Because we're already going to have a decent economy going in. So we really don't need to worry about resource rates. It would be much better to just have... Um, is that the guy that allies with me? Yeah, he's, he's dead. He's dead as a door now. Cool. I can take his mining now. Awesome. Wonderful, man. That also means it's one less neighbor I have to deal with. It might be dangerous. Yeah, let's get some uh, upgrades on these guys. I just want to see, is the crossbowman actually working? Like, can I actually train crossbowman? Is that bug too? Because if it's only the car that's bugged, then uh, that's probably not as bad. But if uh, I can't even like, train the crossbowman, that would be pretty sad. Yeah, see, I actually have a fairly good economy out of it. Pretty good. Pretty good indeed. And then, by the time we do have to get into that deploy arc, we will have really all the transports we need to keep gathering. And then we can go for super duper economy afterwards. May as well get an arch already found me now to help out with that. I wonder though if even those market techs even benefits the grenadiers and their gather rate. Yep, this gives them their stuff for free. Quite useful. Just one less unit to mass. Yep. Alright. Uh, but cool, so of course we would actually do work. Alright. Good to know. Yeah, let's get our full like max this out basically. Then we can pick up advanced fortifications on the way as well, so we don't have to pay for the resources for that. We can also have enough for forts if we can get forts or walls. Uh, it just saves a on a lot of resources. Hmm. We should be seeing a revolt here, finally. It's been a while since we saw one, right? Yeah. Be good to see that again. He was apparently an ally, so I get these to become carbonized when the time comes. Revolutionaries, where is this guy hanging out here? Is he gonna cross the bombs for me? What's up with him? Is he gonna be a threat? I think he might just be scouting around, honestly, for now. At least, yeah. Hopefully just, just scouting around, seeing what kind of havoc he can, havoc he can cause. Well, from a scoring standpoint, but I'm actually one of the higher scores on the map at this point, which is making me think, you know, why why these opponents are actually competent TR players from the looks of it. Because I'm not even playing an actual traditional TR deck and I'm still managing to keep score above them, so. They actually just have to kill the French, effectively. Be kind of lucky if that's all I have to deal with. We'll be working on my part. And then we can actually showcase the stuff that I wanted to showcase for the French Revolt. Well, you know, we'll, we'll do that actually. Once we hit that revolt, we'll, we'll play it by the way I would. Get another foundry up. Get some wood out of here. Just a few more curious to go, and then we can go up to the revolt. 
I'm just gonna send this just in case it does carry over. Just to have it. Yes, yeah, yeah, see, but my score is actually pretty good compared to most of these players here. So I don't know quite how skilled they are at TR stuff. Because a lot of times, what you want in TR is just have a bunch of economic cards, so their scores should actually be soaring above mine. Only French and Aztecs appear to be the case for that. Which is a little odd, to say the least. But I guess the more weak opponents I have to deal with, the better for me. Let's get these out. Because remember, you can get these to be a clues for 10 less wood if you train them beforehand. Nice. Get some nice 5 cavalry units. Don't cost any population. See, this is going to be part of, part of my uh, booming strategy here, is get these good ideas out of the church. I'm going to start with the young guard first while it's going up. Then I'll be able to send in the other ones as well. And then I'll show you a pretty neat little trick you can do with these good ideas. Uh, get some houses up, because apparently this is the only, only revolt where you actually have to build houses. Unless, unless other revolts require to have houses. I know more is a little bit, you don't actually need houses to um, hold any population. You have like 200 population all the time. Hmm. I like how the old, uh... Oh, they change when you... I saw that in Wars of Liberty, actually, like the unit texture doesn't change until you start moving it around. Get some more of the, um... Get some more of the Eclos out. Get about ten of them. Put my Royal Embassy down here, get some of the French natives. Now, this is the card I would start with. I would start with Jenny Troops first. Because Jenny Troops gives you grenadiers to be able to mine, chop, and construct buildings. This will be great for your economy. And since this is a TR, what we can actually do is, is um, get full population now. Maybe get these out of here. You can take this large sum of uh, grenadiers that you already have, and you can actually start um, chopping with them right away and mining. Right, like you see this resource mine here, put them right under that mine and start gathering away from it. And you can actually put most of your gatherers here onto the um, food because you could use these grenadiers to get all of the potential wood and gold that you're going to need for the duration of the fight. Yeah. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to just focus on the economics first. And then I'm going to put some field hospitals up to get some food. Actually, I'll get the factories next. That'll be my next step is getting the factories out. So i got enough houses here. About 10 to close for my defense. Not that strong, but they're pretty good considering that they don't cost any sort of population. Now... Just keep as many of these good ideas as we possibly can to get lots and lots of wood to, so we can add more than we're, wood than we're ever going to need in this matchup. Send this just in case if it works. I don't know if it does, but we'll see. Get these upgrades up as well. Start sending the factories in. Do the next step. Get some mills up, get some food, because we're gonna need lots of that food to do some economic gathering. Alright. Okay. 
Je le ferai, oui, oui, oui. Je le ferai, oui. Good. Très bien. Oui. Oui. Nice. Uh, get the factory up. Got just about a whole population way worth of grenadiers. We'll start selling the upgrades for the grenadiers as well. Also, want to think about maybe getting some of these upgrades as well, since this benefits your infantry. Also, get these out. This benefits your sanctuaries. How about the gold up here? Is that being utilized? May as well use it. Yeah. Go for it. Get those things taken. Start getting the guard upgrade on the grenadiers next. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Yes. <laughs> definitely, you want to be careful of clams. Clams can definitely cause some issues. But, uh, wait a minute. Where, where was the Imperial upgrade for these Grenadiers? Did they get one? Oh, yeah, you have to send the, uh, Grand, Grand Armée for that. Yep. Right. We'll get that right away. We'll get that a little bit later. Start chopping this place down. We actually go into full farming now. We go into full farming, we'll be able to keep up really well with the resources. Get Seed drill as well. That's no artificial fertilizer. Right. Second one. See, right. see, with this revolution, you actually can get some decent resource gathering if you plan it properly. If you don't plan it properly and you don't go in with enough, you could very well have some issues. Yep. So somebody ended up resigning out of nowhere. Probably due to the low score. <laughs> yeah, you always gotta love that when they leave before the treaty even starts. Terminates them. Yeah, another factory I Wait a minute, are they actually attacking someone else? That's, that's strange. They shouldn't be. Shouldn't be attacking yet. The revolt hasn't, the treaty hasn't terminated yet. They shouldn't be attacking. Get some upgrades on artillery. So we have basically full capacity right now. Um, the one thing you don't get is a capital. That's the one thing you don't get. It's one thing you won't be able to look forward to here. And those, uh, oh yeah, the way that's going to be a problem as well is um, you can't actually train a lot of these because these unfortunately have a population cost now, so you'll have to be careful with that. They do have good stats though. That's the good thing. Get a tavern up, get some extra gold. Pump some extra gold out. Get this extra mine here. You can find as many mines as possible, that would be good. Because the mine gathering rates could be pretty good with all these good ideas on top of them. Yeah, I'm still pretty sure that the score is actually not much different. Not 
it's actually that high, almost like third in score right now, just about any sort of economic cards being sent. Yeah, I'm going to try to farm up as much as I can now, so we can make whatever we need. Once it gets to that point, get some guard crossbowmen. We're going to want more musketeers and helps, probably. And a deck like this, and we can also send the scrums as well. Oh, the Vulpic Wars aren't actually that expensive here. Uh, nice. Pretty nice cheap technology. Uh, how about Gendarms though? Gendarms are probably a place here. Well, not really. I mean, that's pretty, pretty, pretty cheap considering a lot of things. Move the Grandiers up, get more trees. And I don't even really need to keep the bills on building because I can just use the grenadiers to do it. To put, put another foundry up here so we can get more builders out if we need them. So I got enough shipping room to ship out some more stuff if I wanted. Like uh, artillery or maybe one of these. Yep. So is this just for like Imperial upgrades for your military? So yeah, that doesn't actually improve your sensor at all. The one thing to keep in mind though is when it's time to fight these sandwiches will actually go into combat with your units. You know, they're probably all gonna fall. Putting stuff on the periphery. Normally I would send um, the continuers here, but I just feel like in this situation it's not as quite as necessary yet to get that. We could probably wait a bit. Next I'm probably going to start sending out the, um, the Grand Armée so we can start getting these to the Imperial Age level upgrades. We're going to really need that. Do what? Keep my infantry best played and my socket bayonet now. Counter infantry rifling, got this. Get as many of these touches we need early on. Can we get that mine up there or is that taken? No, we can get that mine. Get oh, I'll put that um, put them on some other some other farmer. Yeah, put them on uh, this farm here. It's wasted build village of time, which isn't good. Yeah, I still can't believe I'm just, like, almost could potentially even beat the second place in score right now just without any economic shipment sent. So I that this bolt actually isn't too shabby, even in the late game. We'll have to see when action really starts coming down, though, how it goes. If we do need to do some walling work, I guess we can because, um, you know, we sent the advanced fortifications, so yeah, got a bit walling. This is completely free as well, which is nice. Hmm. Just waiting for that shipment to come, and then we can uh, 
get some nice Imperial upgrades on these units so we can keep up with everyone. The only thing really holding us back is upgrades right now. But we'll we'll be keeping up with them there shortly once we get that. Yep, I will be sending Grand Arme now. Just to get those upgrades in time. Well, no, because we don't have any train posts here when I'm actually going to get my next ship in and want to definitely get that out before we do any sort of fighting. The Zikors will become pretty handy if they make skirmishers. Hopefully I'll be able to win my first initial mass just spamming wide grenadiers at them. If I can, it'll be good if I can keep my uh, Sanchwitz at home farming. I know farming isn't the best economy, but it's better than nothing. And then I can keep my factories on the uh, go. How many grandeurs do we even have? We have about like 30 something here. Probably have more, more over here. So I got massive of them up here. Let's see if we can find any other sort of mining. I really don't understand why people are leaving before the treaty timer has even come off yet. This is only going to leave like one potential serious rival being the pink Mexicans and the French. Boy, he keeps up his pact with me so we don't have to deal with any serious shenanigans with that right away. Just take out that uh, Mexico, then we can take out the Dutch and the Swedes, and then oui. then we'll Je face fly. off for the final oui. uh, skirmish. Just oui. go around, see if there's any... Well, is there going to be any forward bases because its treaty is still on, so they can't really build out Je that fly. far beyond the starting point. Once things start kicking up, then we'll see for real if it oui. starts to... Oh, we got a Swede right here. Actually, so maybe that maybe that's where I should go. Who are these Swedes exactly? They down here. Might actually be a good starting point. Take out this low score. No, that's actually another. That's the Spaniards. So where would the Swedish be coming from? Where are they? They seem to be gathering all over the place. Not quite really racking up much of a score at the end of the day. So I wonder what that's all about. So this is where the Swedes are coming from all the way out here. Yeah, might might be wise to just come out here to, to attack. Attack this one, then we can curve around that way. That way we will actually be pretty reinforced and built back at home as well. Put down some stables here, put down some military stables and so forth. Got some tackle, get the pillage. Also I want to have uh, professional gunners now and gunners quadrants so we can uh, have a flexible artillery force to deal with whatever they're doing. Yeah, this is um this is going to be interesting to see if it works. Hmm. Guess just wait for the, the treaty to end so we can start fighting some armies to the uh, east here. I can hang out around here actually and start chopping wood in the meantime. That way I can start building closer to that area. Not to run out as far. Having grenadiers actually able to build buildings can be actually a pretty dangerous thing to deal with for that army. You know what I can do though, which is kind of, kind of no, I can't though because of the treaty. Yeah. 
that's kind of poor. Well, I was thinking was, yeah, let's start putting down towers with the uh, grenadiers. I guess we'll have to wait to do that, though. And then I can delete the towers and put them more towards the opponents that I'm targeting in each sequence. Yep, I'll start getting those imp upgrades now on stuff like the musketeers in particular, or on the grenadiers. On the horse artillery, hopefully, get us again on the pet imperial cannon as well. On the falcons. Really, any of the units we could potentially train during the course of the match. Corsairs, certainly we can make those. Dragoon. Yeah, that sounds fun. What do you well, I actually don't mind getting Code Napoleon, actually, because Code Napoleon might actually help us gather a lot better. And the fact that we're going to be getting so much wood with all these grandeurs chopping actually makes it not that bad to have more expensive buildings. Yeah, I could actually use more resources than I thought about before, actually. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see how this goes though. Get that help it is up. Actually get the crossbone pikeman up because I'm actually need a nice trash unit to take advantage of all this wood. Uh how about hussars? We need hussars really maybe. Mortars. Potentially, yeah. I don't think I'm going to use culverns that much, so I don't really see much of the use of culverns right now. <laughs> yeah, he's just hanging out right by my uh, crop here. Yeah, I'm just leaving him. You know what, then? I'm just going to take this big ball here and just send him in your general direction. Like that. See what you can do with that. Uh, yep. Let's go. Let's get some uh, grand ears over there. Let's go. Cool. So, so they're both over here. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, these are the soldados. Oh, yeah. Gotta be careful of those. What I can do is, is I can back up just enough here to popping down towers. Well, these are full grenadiers, so they can just keep doing that splash attack. The soldados will lose uh, their splash attack for a period of time, giving me a bit of a better chance of using it. It's my advantage. Yeah, let's get some mild riflemen out. These could be quite useful for me. Yeah, these soldados are doing a lot of damage to me. I'm going to need both of the to really do an impact on these things. Yeah, let's get some of the both of out and mix some more of the in. Well, the thing about soldados is they are very pricey for heavy infantry. Like, once you get the numbers, just back up, man. Just back up. You know, that's all you have to do. Just get out of the radius of the flag. Just force them back, you know. Force them to retreat. Make some crossbowmen if you want. That's only an option. And maybe I'll actually consider getting a plantation as well. Or in the state as it's going. Good. Very good. Well, let me deal more with my front down here. If I need to pull the sandwich up front, I will. 
Hopefully I don't have to and I can just keep collecting. Notice though how my score went down by like 1,000 just by having the great ideas to watch the end. Yeah, big difference. Oh, horse riding, so we might need calves after all. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll pop out a couple, couple, couple of culverins. Maybe Sturman Culverin, perhaps. This can save one for now. I could probably rest to sip on one of those spicy machine gun systems like that. It's something for us from the night tonight. Yeah, this is a good one. Mammoths and uh, grappling camels. I could really use that. Okay, let me see where my uh, foundry is. Where is my foundry? Yeah, oh, nice. I messed up then about having all these things all over the place, yeah. Might actually need a full force here so we can put everybody up at the front. Yep, put everyone forward. See, if you need them, they're, they're there, but prefer not to use them. Prefer just to keep them gathering. I'm gonna put the mammals right on top of these. Put the pig machine guns on the artillery. Nice. Perfect. Alright. Alright, let's. Oh, we might need some more. Alright. I guess so. Uh, this will need them a little bit longer. Some more archers, yep. If you use a cross, then you're gonna research your best about longer. So if you use other things. Obviously, you can send the, um, when battery. What's your unit by the Oui, oui, chargé. Oui, 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 I'm gonna add some more stems in to get a little bit more power. Yep, quite good actually, quite good. Yeah. Uh, what can you say, man? What can you say, man? Yeah, I'll maybe send an upgrade then. The deal system should be alright. Make the artillery a bit stronger. Yeah, this is this will seems to be going pretty well. I mean if you can hold off against the soldados for long enough, to expect to lose resources to get the towers crazy they are. Yeah. That's sort of the idea, just make him burn through his resources, just burn him with things. 
Well, I don't know why it's giving me like this military limit thing. That's a bug. It's really, um, I think we have enough to keep. Let's make some, uh, pikemen. Yeah, pikemen should be alright. The kills should be alright. What is the military unit limit exactly? Nice. Nice work. Get on the farming, man. Doing some farming. As a disconnect, I thought that would be a disconnect for a second. Yeah, you don't want to disconnect because you want to play it out, but, you know, I was just wondering if it was going to happen at all. Hmm. So it looks like he's building up on me on this side using stables, so I'd better shift myself over to the side of it. I'm gonna get some musketeers with my gold now and put the most of the expo in I think. Because if he's going with the Chinanka riders, then we definitely need to have a better option to deal with cavalry then. And then get these field promotions on them to make them even better. Field promotions, what else can I send? I can send, uh... Alright. Imperial World Guard, potentially. Get some better Grenadiers out. That would be another good option. Uh... I don't know, it seems like, um, this, this, uh, revolt might be bugged, saying I have a, need a military unit in it. What's that, is that, like, do these act like they have a build limit on them or something? See, these sandwiches are actually good at taking out artillery, though, which is kind of nice. Kind of useful. Uh... Now we just push them with the musketeers for the best. Nah, don't do that. That's a waste. Uh. and rip spear and get some more XP, I guess. Oh, 
Yeah, I don't know about this gold if it has a serious system issue. Like, I'm not able to call upon better units like artillery and so forth. Otherwise. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it seems like uh, you just slowly lose out if you can't ship things. I'm gonna try to queue these up on the heavy cannon so we can get some nice free artillery units. Yes. We definitely need something to defend with. Try to get more of those grenadiers. They seem to be pretty valuable. I don't know how much we can do with this little resources, but uh, you know, we'll try our best with them. Sure can accomplish. It was an interesting test though to see, you know, how it plays on a larger scale. Right, like in the long term weight game, how good is this? No, I want to find out what that military unit number is though, because that seems pretty detrimental. The fact that you can't just ship units as much as you want, and how you want. Like, what do you actually have to do to let yourself make more of those units? Is it... Why is it so weak like that? I'll leave that for my blader. Yeah, see, now you can make something. Now you can make something useful, right? See, now I can make stuff. Uh, Definitely not what I wanted to deal with. Um, get some more artillery out, shall we? Like uh, this. this looks like a good shipment. Get this upgrade so we can actually start. Uh, Proving the heavy cannon receiving rate. That's a lot of artillery, Dad. That's going to be quite useful. That's actually doing a lot of good at keeping them away. Just some more coolers, I guess. It sneaks you in a bit. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna work. Like, if I could have sent this a long time ago without this military unit stuff coming up, yeah, I probably would have had a better shot at it, but now that I can, it just makes it really not viable. Really not viable, though. But good to Call that with a resignation though, because I just don't see us really pushing out much farther beyond that. I do think the France, the other France is definitely going to win this one though, because it seems to be in pretty good shape. It's like half the map under his control. Definitely not to worry about that. Yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, but you get the good idea though from most of this gameplay of what it's like to acquire the French Napoleonic Revolution and how good it really is. If you have any questions about it, just pop it up in the thread when it uploads tomorrow probably. Try to answer as much as I can for you about it. Seems like an interesting revolution, but uh, you, you tell me, do you want to use this in your games or not? in your 1v1s, your 2v2s, your 4v4s, and your FFAs, like, it's really up to you. I definitely don't like that military unit issue, though. I need my shipments to come out when I want them, assuming I have the population for them. It's definitely going to cause you issues, otherwise.